Huh. Hey guys, it's Dane at Jonah Guitars, and uh, I got a brand new build series uh, I'm gonna start uploading. Uh, it's about this guy right here, the gecko, and uh, all of the uh, the whole process of building will be uh, covered. It's, it's going to be a very complete uh, series. So I hope you join me and uh, we'll see you there. All right. Hi, guys. It's Dane at Jonah Custom Guitars. So uh, what you're seeing here is a piece of walnut, uh, black walnut uh, that was grafted into an English walnut. So you've got the combination of black and English walnut. And then it was cut. I cut it right off there. You can see that I do the pattern of a guitar body on it. And so I took that top piece, it was all one piece, and I've trimmed it up a bit. This thing was in a burn pile at one point, and uh, so it's got some burn, some burn in here. All this edge is burned all the way down the edge of this board. So, um, got this piece, this top piece then. We're going to bring it around here. And I've been trying to flatten it out a bit. It's, uh, as you can see here, maybe this is the best edge to look at. You can see I have that white line on there, here my china marker, china pencil. Uh, so this flipped up on this edge it flipped up quite a bit here so it's it's come down I started out with my uh, number eight Stanley over there and uh, I don't really have a good way to clamp this sort of thing down I don't have a standard kind of a woodworker bench with dogs and you know bench vices and things like that so I had it clamped down with one clamp through a hole in the top uh, right there you're looking at the hole anyway and I also have the three and a half inch or number three and a half I guess is the more correct way to say this uh, craftsman craftsman plane here um, I kind of reworked both of these planes I don't remember where I picked these up but I think I got them both at the same time that record Bailey record no, not Bailey Bailey Stanley number eight over there Joiner plane and uh, in this three and a half craftsman um, so, the, um, those guys, I tried to, to whittle that down somewhat with, uh, with those and it wasn't going anywhere fast and there's quite a bit of unevenness on this so I thought I would uh, speed myself up so I took my guard off my Grizzly. Don't try this at home. Guard off my Grizzly um, joiner and uh, I've been running it through there and got it down pretty good that way. As you can see that's the spiral cutter head with the the individual teeth. That's really good for uh, not chipping you know, the edge of your board out. You still should read your grain though. If you know anything about using planers or you know uh, joiners, you got to read your grain. So I've been all over the map with this piece. This is I've really been debating over the next build. Yeah, I just uh, the last one I did was the Nighthawk. I'm moving around here. Nighthawk body shape with a neck through, um, you know, this pattern I told you about before. Got that pattern uh, uh, traced off my son's uh, Nighthawk. And uh, so, been debating. I thought, well, you know, I'm going to build one. Move my way over here. Um, a little rabbit trail here while we're at it. A buddy of mine gave me this piece of uh, this abalone shell, and so at some point I'm going to try my hand at cleaning up abalone and using that for inlay instead of just buying it pre-made. Um, this was I kind of started off of my I'm not sure how well that's going to show, but my own body shape uh, that I've been using for a while, but. Um, Kind of, kind of redesign the horns. I'm, I'm thinking pointy something, you know. But I really, really, I'm back to this 
I don't like building copies just because I like to do original stuff but I really liked the outcome of that last guitar and I really like this Nighthawk body shape so I'm kind of back to that so that's when I started whacking on this piece of walnut that's kind of the direction I'm taking um, this thing is quite varied in thickness so I thought about just doing a one piece cap and then I thought well I've got this I've got this nice piece uh, and I don't know that you'd be able to tell really well here but this is a piece I've whittled a lot of necks out of and uh, yeah I can't say that it's really obvious but there's you see those dark lines that's kind of a tiger stripe so up on this edge like like this you got kind of that stripe there and it's it's a uh, pretty much quarter sawn from this direction straight up and down here. I'm going to shoot some water on it and see if it darkens those lines up at all. So, got my boards wet. Now you kind of see that stripe. So when you get some lacquer or some oil on that, uh, it shows up pretty nicely. So anyway, th th here's the debate. Thinking about taking this piece of wood and, you know, cutting it. It wouldn't have to be quite in half, but cutting it there and then splitting it and creating a, a book match, you know, opening this up, create a book match cap in this walnut to go on top of this piece of uh, mahogany here. And I just pulled this piece of mahogany out though it's uh, two inches net there or just just slightly under two inches and uh, I think this is my actual this is uh, original genuine mahogany they call it um, so it's a it's a nice it's a nice board but it's not quite wide enough I don't know if I'm making any sense yet but what I was planning on doing was basically cutting this board ripping it down the middle and putting putting the maple through the center of that and it's it's tall enough this way thick enough that um, you could actually split the back and the top and uh, do that and there's no need with the piece of walnut I have to to do it you know a split it or even a book match I could do a one piece top but just thought it might be a little more interesting to throw this piece of maple through the middle of it but then this piece of mahogany isn't quite wide enough for that anyway so I'm rambling but pretty much trying to decide what's the best use of this piece of wood whether it's to split it through the center uh, you know and do a and then put the the maple in the middle of that create a back and then just use that as a one-piece cap may end up doing that uh, I'd kind of like to, uh, the reason I'm not just doing it solid walnut is it's going to be too heavy. And I, so I, I want to go with the cap rot so I can chamber the body and, uh, and reduce some weight on it. So i um, also think about doing, um, what they call, I guess it's the jazz hawk that has the F holes in it. So same body shape as a night hawk, but with a, you know, semi hollow, hollow, uh, body. Um, anyway, that's, that's the thoughts. Uh, the other thing I've been wanting to do for a really, really super long time is um, is a nine string, and not a not a nine like a seven, eight, nine where you just keep getting the neck fatter and fatter, but a nine string like the way you think of a twelve string uh, with you know harmony, unison, and harmony strings. Um, so uh, I guess they're all unison strings. Anyway. It's like a six string with the six extra little strings only only on the high strings the E B and G would be doubled and uh, and then your you know your D A and and fatty string uh, would be just standard like on a six string so that you'd have a jangly high end with a you know good good bottom in that you could you know do runs on and stuff like that so anyway that's kind of what I've been wanting to do for a really long time, so I think I'm going to do it on this build, um, which would mean that the headstock would have to be big enough to accommodate nine tuners, and the neck would be 
uh, Scotia wider than a normal, say, electric six string. I typically do my electric six strings at right around an inch and 11 sixteenths. Uh, some people will call that wide because they're used to the, the inch and five eighths necks. Uh, so I might just go just a fuzz over 11, inch and 11, and then add the extra three strings. Um,
this is a really pretty small saw for somebody to do resawing on. I got a half inch blade with about three teeth per inch. If I remember correctly, and what I was doing on the joiner just now is just getting that down to where it fits under this guide block on this blade. So that is the absolute maximum I can resaw right there. And seven and a quarter fat. for this little saw. So the way to say that, you know, it should probably have a minimum of three quarter inch blade uh, and a whole lot more horsepower. The, uh, I'm not sure what is being seen here. Just the, uh, the evenness of this turned out being quite a bit uneven. I was afraid because I couldn't read this board very well. But I'm just going to plane the excess of this fat side, uh, you know, down. And then we'll have, uh, we'll have our two halves that are the right size. So book matched. I have no idea here. It uh, looks like that. An interesting piece of wood. The outside, this this is the other way. That one together there. So I don't know which is which way is going to end up being the better way. We'll see. Uh, it doesn't look real even uh, from this end. Got some odd odd uh, odd stuff. So it's going through the board kind of sideways because it doesn't really line up very well. So it might be better off to have that on the outside edges and use the other for the center. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue to thicken this stuff. Set up the, uh, the planer. I'm going to pause it. All right, here we go. Um, 
got this piece of wood it's fat on one end thin on the other still not down to the thickness of the other one this is partially why I shouldn't say partially this is why basically this one is this thickness um, and this one isn't you know a huge amount different I was that's what I was trying to figure out so it feels like part of the slabs are really really thicker than I need it but because it's tapered and very uneven I needed to um, you know needed to cut it like that so we're, we're narrow on this end really fat on this end so when I start pushing this through the the planer right I'm going to gauge it to this side the cut rather than to the narrow side the thin side because obviously if you start on the thin side by the time it gets you know to here it's going to be jamming up so it's going to make a lot of passes before it gets to where it's doing anything even. And I kick the uh, dust collector on. piece, other piece. This is the piece we've been working on. So uh, it's getting close. This is still thicker. But it's getting close enough that I'm just about ready to start popping them both in there just to make sure I'm not going past my thickness. So I'll level out this face, this face right here where this wing is, and uh, continue to plane this face. Not getting any real major tear out, so I think I'm going to keep going in the direction I'm going. Because, uh, and I'll just get these things to where they're pretty close, and then I'll decide which way they're going to book match, and then I'll do the glue up. Um, I probably need to reset this camera before I can really show you the way that looks, but there's something that's because of trying to look back. Okay, I guess you can see that. There's the, the apparently in the width of the the uh, bandsaw blade, it changed, you know, this to some degree. You can see this this little uh, shape is farther out over here than it is here. And then you have one that's farther out here than this one. So this is fairly even, although not totally. You could correct this to some degree by, well, no, actually, see that if I shave this edge, then this one gets smaller, but then this also gets smaller, and this needs to get smaller. So I don't know. If you just, if you just flop it that way where the resaw hits out here, it's not as obvious. It's not, there's nothing of interest going on here either. Um, I might, I might decide to carve this just to, you know, give it some interest and, and flash on the grain. When you start carving, you start picking up nuances you don't get on a flat, flat piece of wood. But uh, having said all that, still, when you um, I lost track of my, my train of thought. When you um, when you get this all sanded down you know, to about a thousand and you oil it or you lacquer it, uh, the grain's going to pop more than likely whether it's anything special 
or if it's carved. So, just feeling around on this board. Now this is the one I've been milling. This board actually feels thicker on this end, so I'm going to start pushing it through as well, uh, just to make sure I don't get too far ahead of it. So we're going to turn the turn the noise back on and uh, fire this up and run it through. So we're back. Um, just do a station ID here. Ding Nichols, John Custom Guitars. Uh, doing another Nighthawk body, which for the guy that says he doesn't do copies, this is my second Nighthawk. Uh, I just really, really like this body shape, and the, what I'm wanting to do with it, I think, is going to be really cool for this. So. Uh, debating on on this right which way the um, the pattern the grain patterns on the book match I don't know how well you can see any of that in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kind of lay this out and uh, trace it so we have an idea of what's what's happening inside the the you know the perimeter. Of, uh, of the guitar shape so that we get an idea of what we'd be looking at as a unit and unfortunately I probably do have one that's got what I do with these I probably got one that has pickup holes in it as well in the ground well I didn't plan this very well uh, I know I have one that has pickup holes in it so but Pretty much this pickup is going to be you know, right in this area, so most of that's going to be obliterated, not to mention that the, the end of the fretboard is coming down in here. So all of that's pretty much, uh, you know, out of the picture. Then you've got a pickup right in this area, and then a bridge. So. Bridge in that area. So pretty much, there's not an awful lot that you're going to see of these things not really lining up real good. Um, another problem I have is if I flip this over, um, I could, as you can see, I have room, room on the edge here to go ahead and rip these down a bit, and uh, which would take care of uh, most of this. This wane didn't plane out, and um, I'm down down to about five eighths on my thickness. After running it through, I'm actually a little under five eighths. So by the time I glue this up and and put it through the sander, I'm going to be looking at nine sixteenths thick. That's fine on a flat top, drop top, and that would be good. That would be fine on a carved top as well, but. Uh, that's on this piece of mahogany I have over here. Um, depending on, on if I can make this work or not, um, you know, I want to end up, well, let me back up just a little bit. On a Nighthawk, I think Nighthawks were a little thinner than the standard, so they're probably more in the inch and five eighths overall thickness. Um, a little thicker maybe than an SG. I think those are around inch and a half. And, um, but I like to end up with about inch and three quarters when I do a, <clears throat> excuse me, when I do a top, you know, drop or carve or whatever. If, if I were shooting for a Les Paul thing, I'd be shooting for more like two inches overall, maybe even a little more than that, you know, at the top of the carve. And then the edges would be down at around uh, inch and five eighths, inch and three quarters maybe. So having said all that, I think, that I'm going to stay with it 
this way because then I have some grain that's doing some stuff here where you can see it and out here I've got some different color going through this I think that'll look good uh, the other thing I neglected to think about I've got a couple couple uh, holes whether those are I think they're just growing into the wood I don't think they're worm holes but uh, so I've only got one with it laid out this way with the cutaway right here I've only got one wormhole that's going to be gone this one over here is a little smaller so I haven't exactly decided you know on everything yet if I put a switch here the switch would be over here and if I put the ring around the switch that ring would cover that um, I don't typically put switches up here uh, unless it's a Les Paul. A Nighthawk, the switches are down here. Um, so anyway, worst thing that could happen here is I, is I, uh, I fill that and it looks like a black spot. And it's not the end of the world, world the end of the world. Now, a piece of wood like this, that's a, pretty much a reclaimed piece of wood. Um, Anyway, I think that's going to look good. I like this wood a lot. And when I wet the the walnut and wet the the mahogany, you know, to get the uh, what they're going to look like with oil on them, they actually the colors, you know, blend pretty well, which I like. Haven't decided if uh, I'm going to do a mahogany. Well, I'll probably do a mahogany neck. Haven't decided if I'm going to do a, ma a walnut uh, fretboard or if I'll get a piece of ebony. I think I might go with an ebony board on this one. So, haven't gotten that far yet. I don't have any idea what I'm going to be doing for uh, fret markers, you know, dots or probably won't do dots, but I'm not sure what I'll be doing for markers. Anyway, I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and probably uh, plane those edges a little better and then glue this up. And the next thing will be happening after it's all dry is it's going to be going through the drum sander and everything will be flattened out front and back and that will be uh, that'll be our drop top right there. That's going to be good. I went ahead and got the edges of these uh, trued up and getting straight and square in the, in the joiner. Uh, held them up to the light. We're, we're real good up in the light. No, no gaps. So I'm just setting up clamps right now. Get uh, set up it into the little plane out of the way. Extra glue here isn't going to hurt a thing. 
Uh, I got enough on here that it's really not even remotely critical to put more on the other side. Um, most of this glue is going to squeeze it out. And don't ever use urethane glue. It's not good for this. The other thing I never figured out is when guys do glue ups and they they just let things slide around until it locks up and I've never figured out why, why anybody would do that when you could just run a little clamp down the other way, get your ends lined up. so that things are flat. And uh, I got a hammer laying around or somewhere. All right, I'm just eyeballing into these clamps and they look like they're down. They're all down except right here. We're good there. So, a little more tension there, a little more tension there. You're gonna put Basically, counter clamp these things, and what that does is sure that the board is getting pressure from both edges top and bottom and it's going to lay out flatter that way I don't want it I don't want to lose any thickness on this board fooling around with trying to make it flat so we do it in the clamping board. Just to double check. So I've got good contact on all my clamps. I'm touching the board here and here on each of these, and the same thing underneath, touching that outside edge. So I know that my clamps are down tight against the board, so they really can't be up or down. Just for kicks here, I'm checking. I got a very, very slight rock, and I am up just a fuzz on that joint. So that much I'm going to lose when I thicken the sand. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. One last deal there. Okay, we're all set. It's clamped. Now I'm going to start thinking about the bottom block of mahogany there, seeing if I'm going to be able to work with that or I'm going to have to get a bigger piece. But that's where I'm going now. Thanks for watching.